Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ashwini Priyadarshini Meghur, also known as Avi, and I'm a PhD student in the field of biology. For those of you all who are new to my channel, I make skincare related videos and I help you to understand how does the formulation actually work. So today's topic, we are going to be talking about the La Roche-Posay Tolerine Facial Moisturizer, which is for repair and has SPF 30. Let's just jump into the ingredient list and see what are the different ingredients present in this particular formulation. So there are two parts of the ingredient list. First part where they have mentioned the UV filters. There are four UV filters present here. So first one is avobenzone, then there is homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene. So these four of them belong to the chemical sunscreen ingredients. Well, I'm not a huge fan of chemical sunscreen. I love mineral sunscreen or physical sunscreen, basically. The reason why is that these chemical uh, ingredients actually penetrate into your skin and then they reach the bloodstream and they are passed on through the bloodstream to all different parts of your body. So it can even affect the hormonal changes in females as well as males. So it is not really good choice if you are using chemical sunscreen on a constant daily base it can be really alarming but if you have a mineral sunscreen it makes a like like a barrier on your face so you don't have to be scared that any of the ingredients will penetrate into your skin and then reach your bloodstream if you have a dry skin let's say if you have a very dry skin your skin barrier is already ruptured so you don't have to use chemical sunscreen because it is a pathway for the chemicals to enter your bloodstream. It's an easy pathway. But if you have a healthy skin barrier, if you have oily skin, or else if you have, let's say, a combination skin and you have a good healthy skin barrier, then I would probably suggest chemical sunscreen. But my first choice is not a chemical sunscreen. It's always physical sunscreen. The best thing about chemical sunscreen is that they don't wash off that easily as physical sunscreen. So they stay on your skin for quite some time. So you can retouch up this chemical sunscreen, let's say every five hours, so it's all fine. But when it comes to physical sunscreen, you have to retouch up every two hours. I have made a whole video about chemical sunscreen and physical sunscreen. You can check it in the description below if you're really interested to know the difference between the two and why I love one particular sunscreen over the other. Now we're gonna be talking about the next set of ingredients other than the sun filters. So the next set of ingredients has all moisturizing ingredients. So the first ingredient over here is the La Roche-Posay Thermal Spring Water. I think Avene came up first with Thermal Spring Water. It's an amazing uh, ingredient in general. It helps to protect your skin barrier. It helps with the cell functioning because it has different trans elements. It's necessary for the cell functioning. In general, it's a really good ingredient. The second ingredient over here is silica. And uh, silica is a silicon-based ingredient. So what does it do? It helps the absorption of different ingredients into the skin cells. And if there is water or if there is a particular ingredient, let's say niacinamide, which is also present in this particular formulation, it needs to penetrate deep into your skin so that the skin cells can absorb it and then it can work well. So these kind of ingredients like silica, dimethicone, helps to do that. Dimethicone is also a brother of silicon-based uh, ingredient. So what does it do? It makes an emollient shield. So all the product sits on your skin and makes a shield so that it can work well and the water has not been lost. Because when you have a ruptured skin, what happens is like there is a trans epidermal water loss and dimethicone silica sit on your skin and help the water to stay on the skin. Then there is glycerin. So glycerin is a humectant and it is in a higher percentage over here. So glycerin acts as a water magnet. It sits on your skin and helps to grab water from the surrounding and helps it to penetrate into your skin. But one thing about the humectant I keep saying is that if you don't drink adequate amount of water, what happens is that the humectant sitting on your skin starts to draw out water from the deep layers of your skin because it's a water magnet, it needs water. Then there is niacinamide. So niacinamide is a very popular ingredient. It it is used in skincare industry for several reasons because it is an amazing anti-aging ingredient. It reduces fine lines, it reduces wrinkles, it, it helps in the 
problems of enlarged pores, helps with the acne treatment, helps with cleaning the sebaceous glands, if there is a clogged sebaceous gland. So in general, it's a very good ingredient. And it is in a lesser percentage, less than 5%. Less than 5% niacinamide is in general a very good uh, percentage to opt for because this percentage has promising results, not more than 5%. So it is less than 5%, so I give it a pass because the formulation other than the SPF 30, like UV filters, the formulation that they have used for the moisturizing ability are just good. There is no comedogenic ingredient, there is no fragrance, there is no denatured alcohol. So it is like a perfect set of ingredients for the facial moisturizer. There is even tocopherol, which is known as vitamin E, and it is good for skin barrier functioning. I have seen all the ingredients in this particular formulation and I love the way they made this facial moisturizer. It is so good. It is good for the Caucasian skin as well as skin of color. And then I saw the different chemical filters and I was like, boom, just disappointed. I'm not saying that chemical sunscreens are bad. I'm just, I just don't support chemical sunscreens. And there are all chemical sunscreens. And if you are pregnant, please avoid this product. You should not have chemical sunscreen into your skincare routine if you're pregnant. I'm so against chemical sunscreens if you're pregnant. It is the reason why, because it goes into your bloodstream and your fetus needs your blood to survive. And you don't want to contaminate it with some chemical uh, ingredients and that goes to your fetus. That is such a bad idea. So avoid chemical sunscreen if you are pregnant. So what are my takes about this product? I think it's a good formulation. I absolutely love it. If they remove all the UV filters, that is chemical UV filters and add zinc oxide and titanium dioxide and make it like a physical sunscreen towards more physical sunscreen. Now the question lies, will I purchase this product? Well, well, I won't because uh, there are chemical filters and I already have one chemical sunscreen and I don't want to invest in another one because I don't use it in sunny days. I know that I'm sweating, my sweat glands are open and I know that it can penetrate into my skin. If it's summertime, I won't use it. If it's snowing and I see that it's a bit sunny as well, then I might use a chemical sunscreen. But other than that, I won't invest in this product. But if they remove this UV filters, or uh, chemical UV filters, then probably I will invest in this product. I find the facial moisturizing ingredients better than the sun protecting ingredients. So that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon in another video. Bye.